Got another set of questions for the structure and bonding topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first question, we've got to put the number of bonded pairs and lone pairs in for each of these simple covalent substances. So the thing we've got to appreciate is what is the central atom. So for NCl3, it's the nitrogen. So nitrogen is in group five and it's making three bonds. So it's got obviously got three bonding pairs, but because it's in group five, there's two electrons left over. So it's got a lone pair. Silicon's in group four and it's forming four bonds. So it's four bonding pairs and no lone pairs. BCL3, so boron, is in group three, making three bonds. So you've got three bonding pairs and no lone pairs. The central atom for Cl2O is the oxygen. So oxygen's in group six, using two electrons to bond to those two chlorines. So there's two bonding pairs and there's going to be two lone pairs because there's four electrons left over. So moving on to the next table, so you can see I've drawn out the molecules and I'll be using those to explain the shape, the angle and whether it's polar or not. So starting with NCl3, so we've got that one lone pair and three bonding regions, so the name of that shape is pyramidal. So the starting angle for four regions, electron regions, around that valence shell is 109.5, but the extra repulsion from the lone pair takes two and a half degrees off that. So the expected angle is 107 degrees. Is the molecule polar? Well, that's down to whether the molecule is symmetrical or not. Well, NCl3 is not symmetrical because of the lone pair. So the dipoles don't cancel out, and therefore it is polar. Moving on to SiCl4. So the name of this shape is tetrahedral. We've got four bonding regions and no lone pairs. So it's 109.5. This molecule is totally symmetrical, so all the dipoles cancel, so it's non-polar. So we just don't put a tick there. BCL3 now, so we've got three bonding regions and no lone pairs. So this is trigonal planar, so the angle associated with that is 120 degrees. Again, we've got another symmetrical molecule, so all these dipoles cancel, so this isn't polar either, so no tick there. And finally, this molecule here, Cl2O, so it's non-linear. We've got four electron regions, so the start angle is 109.5, but we now take off five degrees from the extra repulsion from those two lone pairs. That takes the angle down to 104.5 degrees. Is the molecule polar? Yes, it is, because this isn't symmetrical. These two lone pairs break the symmetry, and so therefore the dipoles can't cancel, so it's polar. So you notice I've written FON up here. So this is when you have a hydrogen bonded directly to a fluorine, an oxygen or a nitrogen. You have hydrogen bonding between the molecules. So obviously in ammonia, you've got a nitrogen directly bonded to a hydrogen. So the strongest type of intermolecular bonding is going to be hydrogen bonds. So there's one of the two ammonia molecules we've got to draw. So we've got obviously a dipole across each of the NH bonds. So it's delta minus on the nitrogen because it's more electronegative than the hydrogen. So delta plus on the hydrogen. And we also need a lone pair on that nitrogen. So there's your second ammonia molecule. And the hydrogen bond has to go from a lone pair on the electronegative atom, so nitrogen in this case, to hydrogen on a neighbouring molecule. So we've got another table to fill in for the next question. So the first thing we'll do is look at the structure. So our option is S if it's simple molecular or G if it's giant. So sodium, magnesium and aluminium, they're all metals. So they have a giant metallic structure. So we obviously need G in those three boxes. Silicon has a giant covalent structure. So another G needed there. And the remaining three are all simple molecular structures. So S, S, S. And for the electrical conductivity row, all we've got to do is give it a tick if it is an electrical conductor. So obviously all those metals are, but the four non-metals, silicon through chlorine, are not. So we'll just leave those blank. Moving on to part B, we've got to talk about the um, forces between the particles in chlorine and silicon. So you notice I've written up the melting points uh, above each of the elements. So chlorine is minus 101, whereas silicon is 
1410. So we'll start with silicon. So silicon's got a giant covalent lattice structure. It's got that high melting point of 1410 due to the strong covalent bonds between silicon atoms. So a large amount of energy is obviously needed to break them. So in the case of chlorine, we've got a simple covalent structure. You could say a simple molecular structure there. We've got that low melting point, minus 101, due to the weak induced dipole-dipole, or London forces, you could call them, between Cl2 molecules. Remember, chlorine forms that diatomic molecule. So only a small amount of energy is needed to break those. So moving on to part C, you've got to draw this label diagram for the metallic bonding in magnesium. I always draw three rows of three, and I offset the central row. You don't have to do that. You could have them all lined up if you wanted to, but that's just the way I do them. So we need an Mg2 plus in the middle of each of those large circles, and just dot some electrons in the gaps, and they are delocalized electrons, obviously. And finally, the comparison of the melting points of magnesium and sodium. So magnesium's got a higher charge or greater charge than sodium. So remember it's Mg2 plus compared to Na1 plus. Magnesium's got more delocalized electrons. So more energy is needed to break the stronger attraction between those Mg2 plus ions and the delocalized electrons.